Hey, what is up guys? This is Cob. In this happy little video, we are playing some aerial specialist action. And I actually bought the uh, recall beacon or field recovery beacon or whatever to pull some of my steel balls out on this first round. Um, not something I've really tried to experiment with before, but this guy running a whole lot of crawlers, a whole lot of stangs. I thought, you know what, let's just invest a lot in the arc lights. I'd rather just get my money back from the balls because they're not going to do a whole lot, which ironically they end up actually doing okay, at least on this side of the map. And doing a relatively decent job for us um, in the early games. So I don't know if it was the correct call to actually recall those balls, but whatever, dude. That is not going to be the focus of this video. The reason that I saved this happy little replay, and one more after this one as well, is because, dude, I have like an unhealthy obsession with taking a unit that shouldn't really be able to carry games and just seeing how far you can push it, right? Taking one Rhino and just seeing how powerful we can get one Rhino unit to be, you know? Um, stuff like that. Uh, in this game, we try and make it work with the Vulcan. And it all starts right here with laser sights. So we pick up the laser sights um, item right here to equip one of our nerds. I'm already thinking to myself, okay, bro. You know what? I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm just gonna save this purely for the Vulcan, right? I'm thinking, okay, this guy's already got three units of crawlers. He's got a couple of stangs. Um, Vulcans can take out Arclites relatively decently. Uh, it's not like the heaviest unit in the world for them to deal with. He actually goes a couple of Maxmen here, which obviously I didn't know at the time as well, but I'm thinking, okay, he doesn't really have anything that can kill off like a big giant unit. Let's see if we can make a hardcore carry Vulcan unit with just crazy range. And uh, yeah, see if we can make it work. You'll also see that I just went ahead and unlocked uh, Overlords here. I think that if you're going to get the laser sights and you're planning on, okay, a Vulcan's really, really good against what my opponent is running, and you're saving it for the Vulcan, then you should also be planning on eventually grabbing some air units as well. Generally, Phoenixes, to be honest, work very, very good. Overlords can work too. Maxmen can also work very, very well as well, right? The Vulcan's uh, entire reason for being there is killing all of the little chaff units so that your Maxman units, um, or your Overlords, I guess, can kind of win the sniper battle at the end and get some clear shots on things like Arclights, Maxman, uh, enemy Overlords, stuff like that, you know? So, yeah, that's the idea. That's the plan that we're going for. I kind of scoot through this early round a little bit because we do get absolutely sort of wrecked. That's the plan that we're going for, and yeah, if you are going to run something like this, I would highly recommend pairing up the Vulcan with something like Maxman or Phoenixes, um, that kind of thing. So I see Senior Manufacturing Specialist here. I think I picked this up, because I think, well, might as well just get some money off the old Vulcan, right? Um, yeah, we do go ahead and pick that up. There's the Vulcan right there, dude. Bam! He comes down right away. We get the laser sights on this dude. And to be honest, I'm not so sure I like the positioning of this guy. Again, to be fair, like I wasn't sure um, what he was building next, uh, how much he was going to prioritize things like Phoenix's Maximus and stuff, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I think I underestimated the range this thing would have once it gets like range enhancement as well. Like it really just didn't need to be uh, this far forwards. Um, and I think as a result, I end up need to placing like I end up placing like extra fangs in front of it to sort of protect it. Like what am I doing, dude? He's just too exposed. Um, I should have placed it just a little bit further back, but. We have a crazy uh, range Vulcan here as well. Yeah, I also lined it up so that it's like colliding directly with the Arclight, which is really just not ideal. So like waste some time killing the Arclight and as a result, a lot of his guys get to connect on all my little nerds before it starts killing all of his trash units. But I mean, I guess it works out, uh, works out okay. And uh, yeah, so while his range isn't that extraordinary right now, it's gonna start to get a little bit crazy once we get the range enhancement. And then, you best believe that stuff like further upgrades like Ignite and uh, Scorching Flames are totally on the cards as well, right? Because this Vulcan's kind of nutty at this point. Um, okay. I actually can't remember what the hell I go here, to be honest. Oh, okay, I actually just totally skipped. And look at this dude, my opponent goes right into an Arclight here. I totally should have preempted this. Again, this Vulcan should have just been further back. It could have been like back here. Would have been totally fine. Could have been like back here. Maybe slightly behind these fangs. That would have been a little bit better too. Um, yeah. And so I'll just play this one out a little bit. Um, I can't remember if I start to go into Phoenixes here. Do I go into Phoenixes here? 
Because I see that, I'm pretty sure I see that, okay, he's actually got like a few overlords. Yeah, we do pick up the phoenixes here. Uh, he has a few maxmen down already. I was planning on going into overlords, but then I think, okay, he's already investing like some upgrades into maxmen. It's probably not wise to go for the overlords. And so, yeah, we go for the phoenixes instead. We give them enhanced range. I was totally expecting you to come out with something like maybe some steel balls, something like that. Or maybe even just rely on his maxmen to kill off the Vulcan. I was not expecting the melting point super, super early on. It's a very, very big investment from him. Um, and yeah, it is going to work out very, very good for him. The Vulcan goes down horribly, partially because of my bad placement. Again, just terrible, terrible stuff. Um, and yeah, I don't know, should I have spent the extra 100 supply or something on just dropping an extra unit of fangs here to kind of protect against this? Maybe, maybe not, but hey, it turns out. But check this out, man. The Phoenixes actually still do a very, very good job of uh, impacting the battlefield. And winning is the ground... Uh, sorry, we, we win the ground battle enough that the Phoenixes are still able to do an amazing amount of work here, even on this very first round. But now we have something to think about with that goddamn melting point. I consider deployment module to move my Vulcan out of the way a little bit, but I've already got an item on it, so I can't do that. Um... And we just opt for the missile strike in the world. I think I, yeah, I just slam it over here to take out some of his trash on that side. He actually opts for Vulcans of his own, which is quite smart. He's trying to kill off all of my little guys as quickly as he can so that his melting point will always guaranteedly be hitting the Vulcan. This is where I invest in range in the Vulcan. So it's all, it's all coming together now, man. It's all coming together. Look at that range, dude. 175 meter range. Pretty swollen stuff. Pretty good. Um, I'm also, I guess, like... I'm also pretty sure that he's going to do something. Okay, it's actually a missile and the Vulcans in this case, so I was very, very right about this. But I was pretty sure that he was going to do something to make sure that he can kill anything that I place in front of this. So um, I think I do drop a barrier down here just to sort of cover for these guys. I'm not sure about the placement of that. Should have probably been a little bit further forwards. Um, but I just need to buy some time for the rest of the Fangs to sort of push forwards as well uh, ahead of these guys. So that the Vulcan lives a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I think that increasingly so, we are kind of just ready to switch over to Phoenixes, being the primary carry unit. It's kind of funny, dude. This Vulcan just gets locked on to this one melting point prompt and just tunnels it all game. I hate the attack logic that Vulcans did and how they just get locked onto a target like this. I don't know, bro. I kind of feel like they should just hit whatever's closest to them. I feel like that would be slightly smarter logic for the Vulcans, but hey. It's fine. We actually win the battle over here again on this side because of the missile. Bam! The building goes down. And oh my god. The Vulcan only survives, dude. Even the melting point can't take him down at this point, dude. <laughs> okay, no, we got pretty lucky there, to be fair. The barrier actually helps out by a lot and keeps this guy alive long enough um, that we're going to be able to take the W here. So, even though he will go down, bam, to this marksman, which feels quite bad. The Phoenixes still get the job done. So yeah, Phoenixes, Maxman units to back up the Vulcan. Feels really, really nice. Um, this is where I go a little bit wild, I think. I say, you know what? That's an advanced firepower control system there. Do I have the supplies to do this? I can't remember if this is the game where I say, screw it. Oh my god, I do. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude. Second Vulcan comes down. I check into Ignite. Because he's got a lot of giant units now, right? So what Ignite does is make it so that attacks Ignite, causing Ignite units to lose 6% of their health per second for two seconds. So we have two lots of Vulcans now. We get the advanced uh, firepower control system on this guy over here. I don't think he does quite as well. But hey, check this out now, dude. Look at this. We start beaming this Ned down. Look at the damage. Dude, respect this damage. This is crazy. It's annihilating this guy. We actually win the 1v1 over here as well. But more impressive is how quickly this level 2 melting point goes down, bro. Just to this Vulcan. Now it's just torching everything. Annihilates the other Vulcan too. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, and it's kind of funny, man. Because I was like, I was slagging off Ignite. I was like, oh yeah, Ignite's not so good, man. Ignite's crappy, blah, blah, blah. I recently did a video where I was talking about like my favorite techs on all units. And I was talking about how, like, the fourth tech slot on Vulcan is just, like, useless. Because it's like, yeah, you get Ignite, big deal, you know, whatever, man. Turns out, if you've got, like, really superior Vulcan range, with, like, laser sights on one of your Vulcan, and it's just got crazy, crazy range to it, it's pretty damn good, dude. Like, Ignite is pretty sweet. It just makes it so the Vulcan can kill anything, really, in a large AoE, right? Um, 
yeah, it's good stuff. So I pick up Incendiary Bomb here. I can't quite remember why I placed this now. Maybe it's like here or here. I'm just trying to kill his chaff at the back. So that's what we go for. Um, and yeah, I guess what's also good about this is that you don't necessarily have to level up your Vulcans to level 2. I do it here because I'm just in full meme uh, mode at this point, right? So I level up the Vulcan to 2. Um, but you don't really have to because Ignite is dealing percentage health damage. It doesn't feel like it's that important. We slam down a couple more Phoenixes here. Um, and I just want to keep on alternating between, you know, more Vulcans, more Phoenixes. Transitioning mostly into Phoenixes, though, right? Get some levels on these guys. The Phoenixes are honestly, most of the time, they're going to be like the main carry unit most of the time in a composition like this, right? In a build like this. Um, just getting your opponent to focus a lot of resources on taking care of a Vulcan. Uh, however, I think it's totally fine. But really making sure that you diversify is uh, is the most important thing, you know? Especially for killing things like barriers, right? So my barrier placement here again is just really not so great. Some of the fangs live, but the Vulcan's gonna get to connect again, dude. Okay, this is the round where this Vulcan just gets annihilated by the melting point, which is a bit sad. But this guy over here... Oh, he actually wins the duel again, dude. <laughs> With like no health remaining. Do we actually win this round? I can't even remember, man. Get some melter damage on this guy. Stupendous amounts of damage. Okay, we actually do go ahead and drop this round. Mostly because this Vulcan over here died uh, way too easily and my barrier placement sucked. Dude, I'm so bad, man, at barrier placement, to be honest. When I'm in full meme mode, it's like all I care about, you know? Um, I think I end up just going for barrier here after some consideration for a uh, battleship. And deciding that it's probably just going to die to the melting points. Um, he's leveling the crap out of his melting point over here, actually. Level the crap out of his maximum, too. That's a level 4 maximum. So now we go full insanity mode. Check this out, dude. <laughs> so the reason I'm doing this is because I say, you know what? Screw it. Let's get Scorching Flames, too. Let's just use the Vulcans to kill the barriers. Because it would just be funny. That's the only reason. Was this the correct play? Like, almost certainly not. I dropped some more fangs here in front of these guys just to protect them from the melting point a bit. Um, I feel like, yeah, just phoenixes, maybe with elite maxman here, probably would have been superior. Then, like, mass barriers, maybe some... Yeah, the fangs here were very, very necessary, so I'm glad I at least did that. Um, but instead, we just try to push this to its limit and see how we do, man. So once again, we connect with flames... Feeling pretty damn good about that. The barriers are taking a lot of damage. Sadly, this Vulcan over here, uh, yeah, has a bad time again because I just neglected to play his barriers because I'm an idiot. Again, the right play would have been Phoenixes plus barriers, but we decided to be morons instead. But hey, check out this damage, dude. Check out this Vulcan barrier damage, man. <laughs> They're doing great. And now it's one melting point against the world. And so this guy's just torching everything, and it feels pretty good. So, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, I do think that this combo is actually pretty nice. Don't buy four Vulcans and go Scorching Flames. Nine times out of ten, that's gonna be overkill, right? <laughs> I highly, highly wouldn't recommend this. Um, but, that said, range enhancement plus ignite, uh, if you get laser sights on a Vulcan, genuinely very, very, very powerful stuff. I should also probably add as a side note, if you're looking to counter this, I think that the best possible answer to counter this um, is just any kind of unit to kill off barriers very, very quickly, and then probably Electro Mag on Maxman units. Um, yeah, we deal with this pretty damn well. All right, and in this next game, we are playing as Rhino Specialist. I spent some of my starting supply here on Crawlers, just kind of choke up all of his uh, Fang units, which he places very, very far forward, so I'm already thinking, ooh, those guys look vulnerable to Vulcan. I wonder if I can get another laser sights, dude, and do something similar, you know? Because uh, this game actually came right after the one that you guys just watched. And also because I'm starting off with Maxman and he's starting off with Phoenixes, I'm thinking to myself, okay, bro, that pretty much decides it. My backline is probably going to be composed of mostly Maxman units um, to sort of complement the Vulcan if I do run into one. Um, so I'm, it's just sort of like a tactic that I'm keeping in my back pocket uh, for the time being. Because I'm playing Rhino Specialist, I go ahead and pick up the Haste module as well. Uh, plus attack, plus move speed. Obviously very, very good on a free level 2 Rhino, which will be coming to us in the next round. Um, but yeah, another reason that I'm also looking to say to myself, okay, 
I'm probably going to be pushing quite a maxman heavy build, and we're just going to need something, either sledgehammers or a Vulcan. I actually go for the sledgehammers right away here. Sledgehammers or a Vulcan or something like that to take care of the fangs. Um, crap. I just totally lost my train of thought of what I was saying, but I was thinking too... <laughs> Screw it, I'm just not even going to cut this out. We're just going to leave it in, okay? Um, basically, I'm going maximum because I already have uh, Mustangs on the field to go into Missile Interceptor to protect them from Sledgehammers. And so I can at least relatively trust the maximum to win a duel against the Phoenixes a little bit later on if they need to. Oh, and the reason that I went for Sledgehammers to take care of the Fangs for the time being... Um, is because I could have gone into Acolytes. Problem is, Acolytes are one unit, Sledgehammers are five. Five units is going to do much, much better against snipers like these Phoenixes up here, which are basically sniper units, right? Um, Acolytes die in like two clicks from these guys. It takes them much, much longer to kill a stack of five Sledgehammers. So that is the reason for that, man. Um, so I'm just trying to pick the most optimal unit to get the job done for the time being. And hell, if I don't roll into laser sights, then we're not gonna go for the Vulcan anyway. But there you have it. Boom, there it is. So I've already decided at this point, okay, bro, it's happening. It's happening, man. We get our Rhino this turn as well, so he's gonna get the happy little haste module. Um, I'm trying to decide where to position him, uh, knowing that he's gonna run a little bit faster than the Mustangs. I'm trying to get him in just the right spot um, to take out this Acolyte over here. I'm thinking, okay, bro, if I can just like bum rush this Acolyte and it goes down, there's a pretty good chance that I can rush the building right after that as well. I mean, he has extra callers behind here, but you can see me trying to line it up, right? You see what I'm trying to do over there. Um, And yeah, I actually can't quite remember how I play out this turn right now. There's no way I buy the Vulcan this round. It's just too expensive. Yeah, just more sledgehammers come down. I think that's totally fine to do. Um... And yeah, more Maxman too. So again, when we are pushing this build, the Vulcan is really just kind of a bit. It's going to be very, very powerful with the laser sights. But as long as it's good into your opponent, and then you have like a sniper backline to sort of win the final battle once all of the chaff is dead at the hands of the Vulcan and your other ground units, then it just seems like it could... It's just pretty good, you know? It's just pretty good, so... Yeah, making sure to sort of fluff out your maximum units, drop a new maximum unit uh, every turn, whether it's a Phoenix or a Maxman. Um, yeah, it's going to work out pretty good. So, the Clash goes down like so. The happy Rhino is having a great old time over here, chowing down those Acolytes just as planned. So that's very, very good. It actually just get the building kill as well, I believe. Yeah, they're totally not going to be able to kill it in time. And overall, it's just happy, happy days. Very, very powerful stat from us here, man. Um, really, really happy with how our starting composition is built up. And I believe now, I believe now, it's time for the Vulcan. And I can tell because I went into Missile Strike because it's free. And I know that I'm going to need some cash. <laughs> so he actually goes through the ele uh, Electromagnetic Storm here. Um, I think I just leave my Vulcan roughly in the middle. And I can't remember if it actually gets clipped by this, but there it is, man. Boom, laser sights right in front of all of these guys. Um, do I position it a little bit further back? I kind of like to see myself put it in a bit of a safer position. I mean, it's quite far back, to be fair. Maybe that's okay. Maybe one click further back would be totally fine as well. Um, so, yeah. I upgraded the Mustangs just to help deal with any kind of loose chaff units that the Vulcan can't deal with. Um, and also just as an extra countermeasure against Phoenixes. Um, having those guys nice and strong. Is going to help us out quite a bit. So that's pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, let's see how this one pans out, man. So the Vulcan just going to torch everything. Its superior range is going to absolutely decimate all of these crawlers here. And actually let some of our crawlers get in, I believe. Oh, look at it go, dude. Dude, Vulcan with range is just really good. It's just really, really damn good, man. There it is. And you know what, if your opponent starts to react with things like steel balls or things like other giant units, you can just go into the ignite. And as, as long as you've got like a uh, range plus ignite on the Vulcan, then just protect it a little bit with uh, with trash units. It seems very, very effective as well. Now, that's not to say that things can't counter this. I think that actually what does counter this, and what my opponent maybe should have been going a lot, lot sooner, is just a crap ton of Stormcallers. I feel like if he just sort of spam Stormcallers at this point, 
um, and forced me into building like a ton of Mustangs into it. Like you need to spam like Stormcall or Arclight or something. We'd actually have quite a lot of trouble because um, while Vulcans can kill Arclights, they don't like to necessarily. They're quite bulky, right? They take a little, little bit of time for Vulcans to kill off. Uh, I actually got full... <laughs> We actually go full meme mode again here, dude. I pick up the parasitic ammo, slap down another Vulcan, and go uh, range enhancement. Again, I just don't really think this was necessary, man. I should have just protected this Vulcan a little bit more. Um, with just a few more trash units, maybe some sledgehammers, maybe some more crawlers here. Uh, would have been fine as well. And then just double down on the Maxman. I think that would have been the safer option. But it just so happens in this game uh, that things just kind of work out, I believe. Oh my god, yeah, the parasitic ammo is actually huge on the Vulcan, too. It's actually hard to say what's more OP. Probably parasitic ammo is probably more OP, generally speaking, on the Vulcan than the uh, laser sights, but both really excellent, excellent items. One, my opponent didn't really react too well to what we were doing in this one. Um, I still think that was a cool little example game to show, man. So, yeah, parasitic ammo, laser sights, range, the ignite tech. Dude, you can make a happy little carry Vulcan. Not to invest too much resources into them. I went really overboard in both of these games, uh, I think. To be, I don't think the parasitic ammo was even really that necessary. And just going one or two Vulcans and then a crap ton of Phoenixes and Maxmen and stuff like that is, is, is totally fine as well. Um, so yeah, that's the video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Make sure to catch all of you guys just a tad bit later.